hammer mode in the edit view is another way of exciting the string. And we have two hammer modes. In hammer mode one, which we're in now, it's located below the string. So it hits the string once. But in hammer mode two, it's modeled on the hammer being above the string. So therefore, when it hits the string, it can bounce on the string after the initial impact. Let's start by looking at this one over here, and then I'll show you this at the end. Now, the mass of the hammer is adjusted with the mass knob, so how big and heavy it is, basically. And the stiffness of it is controlled with this, the stiffness of the head of the hammer. And the velocity of the hammer, when it hits the string, is set with the velocity knob. So just with these three controls, you'll hear how we can get a wide variety of sounds. A low mass will be like a really thin mallet, and if it's very stiff, it'll be very brittle and bright. Whereas we can have a mass that's bigger and very low stiffness, so it's kind of flabby sounding. So just with those controls, we get a large range of color. Very harpsichord-like. Now let's look at how we can modulate these with key tracking and velocity. So I'm going to start with the mass knob. And if I put this around here, I can, let's say, set this up a bit more so we get some nice sort of attack to it. I'm going to leave this fairly neutral. I'm going to adjust the key tracking, and you'll hear how the range of the notes that are being triggered will affect the mass over here. And you can see there's a wide variety of pitches here. These are the pitches. There's bass notes and then chords up higher. And these are the velocities. So there, the low notes have more mass to them. And there, the low notes are almost inaudible, and the higher range notes have the mass emphasized. So there, the mass of the hammer is influenced by the note pitch. Here's the same part, and I'm going to play it with an acoustic piano sound, and listen as I dial this velocity tracking knob up, how the mass of the hammer affects the notes at the higher velocity. As I dial it down and as I dial it up, you'll hear the timber being affected by how heavy the hammer is that's hitting the strings. So as I dial it up, the mass is bigger and heavier, and we hear a more full-bodied tone. Let's dial this up even more. So if it's too heavy a mass, it won't work with too high velocity tracking in the upper velocities. Now let's look at the stiffness. I'm going to just set these to neutral so that they're not influenced anything too much. I'll double click that. I'm going to leave this around there and I'll set the velocity tracking to neutral. And you'll hear as I dial up the key tracking, the low notes will disappear. And similarly, velocity can also be tracked with key tracking and velocity. So counterclockwise brings out the notes at lower velocities and clockwise brings out the notes at upper velocities. So we're back to the patch we started with and I want to show you how the other hammer works. I'm going to switch to this and you'll hear as I hold a chord down that you'll hear the hammer bouncing on the strings. Here it is with the old hammer first. And now with this one. 
And as I dial up the stiffness, the bouncing appears to be kind of quicker and brighter. Now the damping knob over here controls the absorption of the impact between the string and the hammer, and it's separate from the decay time here in the string section. Now I'll show you as I dial this down, we'll hear less of the bouncing. But as I dial the decay time down, we still hear the bouncing, but the bounces have a shorter decay. So those are the hammers.